So this review is my follow-up video to the full iPhone 12 Pro versus Pro Max comparison video I made a few months back, where at the time, Apple Pro Raw wasn't yet available. I've since been able to dive deep into what this feature can offer, and have gathered my thoughts on how this changes the iPhone's camera, when you might want to use it, and how well it performs. For those of you looking for an in-depth camera comparison, that's already been covered in the full review, which I'll leave linked down below. Today we'll be focusing just on Apple Pro RAW, and how this compares to the regular photo mode. So we'll start off with a quick recap on what Pro RAW is, but for those of you who already know about RAW and just want to see the camera comparisons, you can skip to this timecode. For everyone else, RAW is an uncompressed file format that contains all of the data for the image recorded by your camera's sensor, and using this format gives you greater flexibility when it comes to editing. Raw images capture exactly what your sensor sees, and retain a lot more information about colour, dynamic range, and the details of your subject, which means you've got a lot more data there to manipulate in the editing process. Shooting in RAW allows you to make all of those colour, lighting, and other adjustments yourself, and crucially, without a loss in quality. So it gives the editor much more freedom to create a final image with the desired look, and in the highest quality as possible. So if RAW can give you the best looking images, why wouldn't you just use it all the time? Well, all of this extra data results in a very large file size, around 10 to 12 times larger than a non-RAW photo, and the image captured straight out of the camera probably won't look as good as a processed image would. Therefore, smartphone cameras will typically shoot in a compressed format like JPEG, which processes the original image for things like sharpness, white balance and brightness, and discards all of the extra information in order to produce a smaller file size. This is an efficient way of producing a good looking image that doesn't take up too much space on your phone's storage. The phone makes the adjustments for you, which makes smartphones really convenient as point-and-shoot cameras, especially for those who are either unskilled or simply don't want to spend the time editing all of their photos to make them look good. And this is essentially the reason you wouldn't want to always be shooting in RAW, and why cameras typically default to the JPEG format straight out of the box. But now that smartphone cameras are getting so good, we're starting to see more of them give the option to shoot in RAW to appease real photography enthusiasts and those who want to get the very best out of the camera and Apple's version of this is called Pro Raw. Now, Pro Raw isn't exactly the same as RAW, because although it retains all of the standard information of RAW, it also contains Apple's image processing data, so it already processes some of the noise reduction and its multi-frame exposure adjustments into the Pro Raw format. This hybrid technique supposedly gives you the best of both worlds, the benefits of Apple's image processing combined with the flexibility of RAW, Apple Pro RAW is exclusive to the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, but works on any of the cameras, including when used in conjunction with Smart HDR, Deep Fusion, and Night Mode, so you can still take advantage of Apple's computational photography. The iPhone shoots in a file format called HEIC by default, which is very similar to JPEG, but it's just Apple's own version designed to optimize the file size and help save on storage. But you can now see there's an option in the settings to turn on Apple Pro RAW, and this will bring up an option to easily toggle on the feature in the camera app, so this is how you can use it. Pro RAW images will instead be saved in the industry standard DNG format, which means we can easily edit these images in compatible apps like Adobe Lightroom, which we'll be using in this video. If I just show you these two example images here, taken just seconds apart, but one in the HEIC format and one in Pro RAW, you can see already just how much more information is stored in the RAW format, as the file size is roughly 10 times the size of the standard HEIC format. But I'm going to open up Lightroom now and demonstrate to you the benefits of Pro RAW and how that extra information can help you when it comes to editing and creating the best looking images possible. So I've got a few different examples here, and the first thing I want to show you is the standard and Pro RAW format side by side. And if at any point you're not sure which photo you're looking at, the one that says .dng at the top is the Pro RAW format, and the one that says .heic is the standard format. Now, initially, I'd say that the standard image actually looks a lot better, and this is something you can generally expect to see pre-edit. It's been fully processed automatically, and I think the colour, and especially the increased sharpness, make it the better looking image overall. But let's say we wanted to see more detail in the darkest parts of the shadows behind the wheel, and I'll switch over now to the Pro RAW photo first, and start making some edits to do this. So if I bring up the shadows, you can now see there's a lot more detail captured here than it first appears, and you can expose this with only a minimal increase in noise, which we'll actually be reducing later. But if I apply the exact same edit to the non-RAW photo now, you can see how the image becomes far noisier, and there's a lot of colour fringing too, and that's because the data simply isn't there to be manipulated. Side by side, you can see the difference compared to the Pro RAW image quite clearly, 
and especially if I then zoom in to the edited portion of the photo. Now the standard photo is still sharper, because the Pro RAW images aren't sharpened automatically, but because all of the information is captured and saved to the RAW format, you can easily go in and bump this up yourself to match the HEIC photo. The difference of course is that you don't suffer as much with noise and colour issues, so you get a cleaner image that's much easier to edit. Even if we bring in some noise reduction and apply this to both images equally, you can see that this isn't enough to rescue the standard image. But with the Pro RAW image, these sorts of changes are much more effective, and this is true whether it's noise reduction, lighting, colour, and you can start to see now how there's much more flexibility with the Pro RAW photos. However, these examples are of a well-exposed subject in good lighting conditions, and you're perhaps thinking that the difference is only subtle, and a lot of the time that is true. But let's say we had a really underexposed image, an otherwise completely useless photo if we didn't make any edits, and this will hopefully demonstrate just how powerful Pro RAW can be. If I bump up the exposure on the Pro RAW image, suddenly this is completely transformed and there is a ton of detail here, again without too much noise. This really puts into perspective the dynamic range available on the iPhone 12 Pro, and Pro RAW lets you squeeze out every last drop of it. And if we now bring up the standard non-RAW photo and apply exactly the same edit, you can see the image is really suffering with noise, and especially with colour fringing. If I zoom in, you can see more clearly this green and purple fringing, and this really demonstrates the benefit of capturing all that extra data with the Pro RAW photo. It's not just brightness and exposure that's important, but the colour information too. If we take a look at this non-RAW shot here, and again bring up the exposure, initially, this actually looks okay. You can clearly identify this as a train platform, and there's quite a lot of detail captured here. But if I put this side by side with the Pro RAW photo, immediately you can see how much higher quality the RAW image is. Zooming in on the roof of the platform, you can see the HEIC photo suffering heavily from noise. And if we look at these buildings in the background, the standard image just completely breaks down, whereas the RAW photo has even managed to retain that information in the darkest parts of the shadows. If I quickly toggle back to the original photo, you can see just how dark this area was. So Pro RAW lets you reveal details that your camera has captured, that as we've seen would otherwise have been lost if you weren't shooting in RAW. Further down in the image in the midtones and highlights, everything just looks so much cleaner in the Pro RAW photo, and the colours are much more natural and realistic compared to this weird green tinting we're getting with the non-RAW photo. And finally, I'll just finish up with a perhaps more realistic photo one might take of this archway. Again, the HEIC image is a little bit brighter, more colourful and striking straight out of the camera. But if we wanted to expose some of those details in the shadows, and I'll zoom in a bit here so you can see more easily, suddenly you get this weird colour fringing with the non-RAW photo. You can see that same greenish colour and this red splodge over here for instance, whereas the Pro RAW photo retains that colour information and is able to correctly present true to life colours, which is really important if you want to make your own colour and white balance adjustments. Further down and zooming in closer here, you can also see the image is a bit cleaner and the details are a bit sharper such as in this gate, and especially this red sign. As with all of these photos, there's a lot of tweaking that could be done here with the contrast, sharpness, and the colour to get the best looking images possible. The edits I made today were pretty quick and rudimentary, just to demonstrate the power of Apple Pro RAW, and even with a basic adjustment to the exposure, you can immediately see the advantage of shooting in it. Remember, if you shoot in the standard HEIC format, and later want to make lots of edits and adjustments, you've got less data to play with, if the information isn't captured in the first place, it's lost, and there's no way to retrieve it later. Whereas if you shoot in Pro RAW, you have the full information at your disposal. And don't forget that you can later discard anything you don't need, and save the final image in a compressed smaller file format like JPEG. So if storage space is an issue, you can always save your edited images as JPEGs and delete the RAW file after you've finished editing. I should also mention that you don't need to use a third-party application like Lightroom to make these edits. Apple's own Photos app now has reasonably sophisticated editing software built in, and actually the Photos app is the easiest way to organise, export and share your photos, especially if you're working in an Apple ecosystem with devices like a MacBook. We've seen that images straight out of the camera often look better in the non-RAW HEIC format. Apple's computational photography does a great job with image processing by itself, and if you're happy enough with how these photos look and aren't interested in editing, then you can pretty much just ignore the Pro RAW feature. But if you've splashed out on a 12 Pro or Pro Max in the first place, you've essentially put that extra cash into the camera anyway, and Pro RAW is the best way to take full advantage of it. Apple Pro RAW gives you complete creative control over your images, alongside Apple's processing data, 
allowing you to unlock the full potential of the cameras, add your own creative flair to your photos, and take your iPhone photography to the next level. So hopefully this video has given you an insight into what Pro Raw can offer. But if you have any questions about the cameras or Apple Pro Raw, then leave them down in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.